about, I don't know how many weeks ago it was, several weeks ago, I had to watch a video on just general notation, different ways to denote your derivatives and things. All right, so let's just review some of that to make sure that it still kind of went into long-term memory. Okay, so first derivative. Okay, we have primarily been doing y prime or f of x prime. We've been using that prime notation. All right, but you can also do dy over dx, okay? That's the derivative of y with respect to x, okay? Which is what y prime is. So those two can be used interchangeable. And if you remember what I told you yesterday, when I introduced this implicit differentiation, I told you we were gonna be using dy primes, right? But if you go out and you just YouTube a video on implicit differentiation, the person is probably gonna put a dy over dx in every place where we put a y prime, all right? It's legit notation, all right? We will use this notation when we go to related rates because it makes more sense to me to explain it to you guys that way because it's always, you're taking the derivative with respect to time, okay? So it, it when you put those labels on there, this notation appears to be a little bit more straightforward. All right, now when we go to a second derivative, all right, we've already done the y double prime, f double prime, that sort of thing. All right, this dy over dx, all right, looks like a d squared y over a dx squared. So that's what a second derivative looks like. A third derivative, I'd just put threes in there. Fourth derivative, I'd put four in there. Okay, so that you recognize the derivatives. Um, something that we did not do, I don't think any of the homework, all you did was implicit differentiation straight yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. You never found it at a point. So we're going to start with that example first, and then we'll go to the second derivative. All right, so let's suppose it tells you to find dy over dx, and you do need to know the notation because if they phrase it in a sentence, and you've got to be able to translate that sentence to find out what they're trying to have you do. Find dy dx by implicit differentiation. I'm going to abbreviate so we don't have to write so much. And evaluate um, the derivative. Again, I'm going to abbreviate at the given point. I verbally talked about how you would do this at the end of the lesson yesterday, but we didn't actually do it. So they're going to give you maybe say an x squared minus a 2y to the third plus a 4y is equal to 2. And they're going to give you a point, say 2, 3. So they're all they're asking you to do, they're setting you up for writing that equation of the tangent line. They're wanting you to calculate a derivative here, evaluate it at this given point. OK, so we're going to use our notation that we did last uh, yesterday. So d dx of this left-hand side. And again, I will say, yes, you're going to say that this is just writing a whole lot of work on there. But whoever's looking at your work needs to realize that this was the original problem. And then this line, you're telling them, hey, I'm going to start doing my derivative. If it's an x term, we just do it like normal. So that x squared is just a 2x. The next term has a y in it. So we'll go ahead and do the derivative like normal there. So minus 6y squared. But because it's got the y, we've got to remember to include the chain. So there's your y prime. I've got a 4y term there. And again, it's a y term. So I'm going to take the derivative like normal, which is going to be a 4. And then since it is a y term, I've got to include the chain. So y prime. Derivative of that 2 is going to be 0. OK, all y prime terms stay on the left. All other terms go to the right. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a y prime because we talked about that yesterday, make kind of helping on the steps. All right, now with this 6y squared being the negative, I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the terms. I'm going to go 4 minus 6y squared just so I don't have a negative in front. Moving that 2x over, I get a negative 2x. And then I can divide. So y prime is going to be a negative 2x all over a 4 minus 6y squared. Now, technically, if you wanted to reduce that, couldn't I take out like a negative 2 on the bottom? All right, I could take out 2 on the bottom. I could simplify. But 
since the point of this question is not really to calculate the derivative, the point of this is to calculate the derivative and evaluate it at a given point, I can honestly stop at this point and, and not screw up any farther in my simplifying and just directly go into plugging that in. Okay, so uh, let's come up here, I guess. Um, evaluate at the point two, three. Okay, so when I do that, obviously the two is my x coordinate, the three is my y coordinate, we know that. So telling the person again what you're doing, you need to write that y prime and then two comma three. That's telling you, hey, I'm taking this point, I'm plugging it into this derivative. So don't let me make an arithmetic mistake. Negative two times two on top, four minus six times y squared, three squared, that'd be a nine. Right, so I'm going to have like uh, negative four. Well, that's just going to be really big. Nine times six is what? 54. Four minus 54. So negative 50. And a negative over negative is positive and reduced to lowest terms, 2 over 25. Which is what they asked for. And then technically at that point, couldn't, couldn't I rewrite the equation of the tangent line? because I've got the slope. And at that point, I've got a point. So I could write the equation of the tangent line if I wanted to, but that's not what the direction said. Okay, so that was just kind of a little review thing there. Are we good? Okay, not really a review, but applying a concept we already knew how to do into that implicit differentiation. Okay, so.